Hey everyone and welcome to game one of the grand finals. We're watching Cognitive Gaming EU up against the one, the only Epsilon Esports, previously Vengeance Esports, and we're in the picking stage already. We're gonna see the first ban out. It's gonna be Ogni followed up by Zhang Kui. Second ban gonna be, it looks like hell this time around. They do not want to deal with that solo lane hell, and then back over to Epsilon to see what they want to ban. So Jean Kuei has just not been allowed at all today. I think every single game we've seen seen him banned. We have, yes. I mean, he's super, super, super strong, but I love the ban out of hell here. They're going to strip that out of Spray Arn's hands. Actually, wait, did, did, did Cog ban Cog hell? banned hell. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Hercules is going to get picked up first here. That'll be a very, very strong soul lane. So you can also imagine that Loki will be picked up on the right side as well. Um... So, you know, they, they have the op opportunity to pick up Thor here, which is pretty big. Uh, there's still a few mids on the table. Neath is available. Sobek is still available. Honestly, I think Sobek, uh, Nasha, or Sobek, Thor w would be the, the best pickups here. We'll see what they decided to go for. Definitely those two pickups um, in, the, in the jungle are a great point to talk about. We're going to see Ra put on the table here for Epsilon. Oh. Second picks uh, still available. I would imagine they're going to go for Thor or Naja. They're going to go for Apollo here and then lock that in and go for the Ra, which leaves the jungle open. And I'm thoroughly surprised the fact that we've seen Thor last picked last game and Naja kind of getting picked up in the third or fourth round of picking. They're going to grab Loki for jungle here to strip out that matchup. Uh, which, oh, wait, nope, they're going to switch over to Kronos here, and they're, I think they're going to force them into a Loki pick next, because I know they're willing to do it. So Kronos is going to be picked up for mid, uh, or possibly solo. I don't know who they're going to want to put him up against, um, but they do have opportunities here. Um, either way, it looks like their solo and their mid picks have been picked up, and then Sobek grabbed as well. So far, Kaguyu has a very dangerous lineup. Yeah, certainly a lot of damage uh, capabilities for them, and, and, and it, that, as that goes forward, it, we'll see how it works out. They're actually going to steal Zeus away from Restarian and put it on to uh, possibly, uh, we'll see actually what they want to put on. They could put it on Schultz. Uh, Schultz is actually a pretty uh, confident um, and capable Zeus player. Definitely uh, the same for Agni. Agni being banned out, Hell being banned out. I think Cog just wants to rely on their side lane, their jungle, and kind of shut down the mid and solo uh, with Hell and Agni banned out. That's something that they can accomplish there. So Naja being picked up in the second to last stage of picking here overall something very shocking Loki put out and it looks like we'll have again a last pick Thor I don't know how this is actually happening every single game but Zeus is going to be picked up again like you said which is a, a strange with this team comp they don't really have a lot of um, push potential here uh, they do have Apollo but it looks like you know Ron Zeus in a game together it, it, they're going to lack cohesive damage. There's not a lot of CC on this team whatsoever. They're going to rely a, a little bit too much on Bacchus. Bacchus is going to have to put himself in a very, very difficult situation to be able to control the way that he needs to here. But Tyr could actually wind up fixing some of those problems. Putting Tyr into the jungle, which isn't my favorite thing to do with the character, but I mean the CC that he brings to the table is very strong. Good initiates, good escapes. He can heal himself, he can sustain, doesn't have to worry too much about that, and he can support his team. Great, great pickup. Yeah, certainly, and there's a lot of things you can do with it. You can go for the blink tier uh, kind of aggressiveness lineup, or you can go for the creeping curse kind of uh, you know slow gain. Tier's one of those characters. If he gets farmed up enough, he's a very strong brawler if played that way. And I think they'll they'll probably do that. You know, they they could have Ra go for the brawler uh, slash mage tank type thing with the Bacchus along, and then tier hard damage, which is also a good route for them to go for. But it looks like overall. For Cog, we'll have Sobek laning up with, uh, uh, looks like he could have Hercules. Sobek, Hercules together, unless they want to put uh, Hercules in the middle lane. SK Gaming did that earlier today, and it didn't work out too well in their favor. Naj in the jungle, Loki, actually, they're going to have a Loki mid, it looks like. Game Hunter playing Hercules and Sobek, and then Spray. So, Chrono solo, Loki mid, Naja jungle, and then Sobek, Hercules. Sobek, Hercules is actually a very terrifying combination. Uh, so just about a minute and 50, I'm sorry, 150 seconds rather, before we get into this game, we're going to cut to a quick break, uh, and that's going to lead us into game one of the finals for EU Conquest number 20? 20. 20. Super. All right. So guys, we'll stick, just please stick around. We'll be back in just a few minutes with game one, um, and I can promise it's, it's going to be pretty awesome. Stick around, guys. We'll be back in just about three minutes when this match is ready to go and we'll be on screen. So be ready for game one of the grand finals. Cog EU up against Epsilon Esports. It's going to be hype. Hey. 
Hey everyone, and welcome back to Game 1 of the Grand Finals. We're watching Cognitive Gaming EU up against Epsilon Esports. We are in the match. We're going to unpause un this as they head out through the jungle. And Brandon, forehand of the gods. It's like we're back in December. Shout out to them juice boys. Forehand <laughs> of the gods. I love it. I'm very, very excited to see this. Uh, we also notably have two uh, starting potions of physical might coming out onto Nasha and uh, Tyr, respectively, on Cog and Epsilon. So that could be pretty dangerous. But look at this. They have forehead of the gods, so they're not really willing to separate themselves into such big things. So they're going to run over. Hand of the gods, it looks like he's going to take one of the two. Work himself out a little bit, giving himself a little bit of experience. The Trix Tank, I'm, I'm sure, is not too upset about what just happened. Earned himself 45 gold and some experience. At the same time, it looks like Sol uh, Solo Herc was able to pick something up. Uh, we have what Loki going back at? to the mid lane. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I, am I ahead of you? I'm at 5, 4, 3, Oh, two, I was not synced. 1, 0. <laughs> I was going to say, how are they ahead of God? So nothing. Guys, I don't understand. In the future, <laughs> let me tell you about what happens. Oh man! So st DM lives so, in the all future. Right, so we 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 know what's gonna happen here. Watch, he's gonna he's gonna get one. They messed up the hand of the gods there. Now we have look at this. Loki grabs it by himself. Nasha and uh, Zeus, I'm sorry, uh, and Kronos here grab the gold camp, and now they have hand of the gods for this one. Loki, like I said, hand of the gods, the one on the right, and then Sobek was, I'm sorry, Hercules was able to uh, use hand of the gods to get himself a blue buff. The overall experience to start off ended up 434 in their favor with an extra 150 gold. A pretty good split for them. They're actually up about 150, 150 gold right now on that char. We see Zeus facing up against Loki in the million. Bach has helped that push up just a bit. Zeus does have a little bit of awkward level one. Uh, driving Strike comes out after the Earthbreaker on top of Apollo, giving lower and lower. This might be first blood. That will be first blood with the help of the archers and such a simplistic combination. But Sobek and Hercules together is so powerful. The double pull is annoying and very frustrating to deal with. There goes a steal from the blue buff, Naja, and the Kronos in the left, or actually in the right side lane. Actually, was this stolen? Ross stole it with the Solar Blessing while they were trying to take it away. A single tick gets it. He's going to leave it on the ground and pick it up now. Now that it's safe to head on over there. So well played by Repikoth. So Zinder now trying to make something happen there. Get him <laughs> push himself down to about 10, maybe 5% of his health. And was fourth back. We actually have another teleport in. It looks like Zinder is joining the fight again. But a level 3 Sobek, level 3 Hercules. Not really afraid. Driving strike to stop the Belch of the Gods. He switches into uh, uh, aggressive stance there. Looking for a chance to fearless. I mean, he might try to do it from far away. The belly flop, but no communication there from Zinder. I don't know if they're going to keep following. So uh, Got the so beautiful off. But the fearless is going to go out into the power cleave on the game hunter and just Despite it, it doesn't look like they're going to have an opportunity. Actually, Lennox getting super low. If those creeps were not there, that would have been a charge prey, a tail whip. And actually, he wouldn't have had enough. That would have been a charge prey. Uh, and it would have been doing a lot of damage. Put him in a bad spot. It could have been a kill there. But that was wasted farm time. The whole time, Nasha is able to gain experience. And now, they're rotating over towards the right side. It looks like they're looking for... I'm not really sure. That, that, that mid camp should have been taken by now. So I don't know what they're they're looking at. Still pushed up here in the middle lane. Uh, it looks like Loki's going to be pushing it up himself as Naja tried to cover up the lane. Overall, we're going to see a thousand gold lead as well as 1300 experience for Cog right off the bat. The two and a half minute mark that is definitely a very large lead given the time frame. Uh, we see, see Game Hunter, the only one on his team that actually has consumables right now. Apollo electing for tier two beads up against Hercules and Sobek. I like this choice a lot. It's definitely a very, very big pickup for him. Charge Prey and a tail comes out here on the block. is getting caught out. The minions are doing damage. He's going to walk through the archers and get completely destroyed. Minions are so very powerful at this time frame. I think Bacchus had the choice of walking through minions or walking through gods. I think at that point, with how many cooldowns were off, there's a charge prey, Earthbreaker, Excavate, Apollo's dead within his own tower. They have so much distant clearing, uh, distance clearing capabilities with Sobek and Hercules that you're not even safe on your tower. And this is something that we've seen before, but we haven't seen it in so long that it's hard to remember just how powerful these two gods are together. I mean, it's definitely, definitely dangerous. And now, Sobek is able to just rotate freely over towards the right side here. He's going to be going towards middle, possibly looking for a chance to jump onto Zeus. He sniffs it out just barely before the charge prey was going to have an opportunity. Three people now from Cog over in mid. Uh, but the camp should be spawning pretty soon. Both sides getting ready for the respawns. The Hand of the Gods are ready. You see Trix Tank's already actually swinging, looking for a, uh, an opportunity to get that pull as soon as possible. But Zindern is checking it out. Repikos is checking it out. Will he have an opportunity? 
opportunity here. Rastarian's trying to burn it down. The ultimate is going to, looks like, get one for his trouble there. And Rastarian's going to try to get out. He does use Assassinate over the wall there. Um, so that's going to waste out his ultimate. But he doesn't really need it in the lane that he's in. So overall, a pretty good trade. Uh, it was good that uh, it, it looks like Rebikas is letting himself be known like, hey, don't just sit here and think we're going to give you everything. Uh, despite the fact that you are in the lead, they have a 2,300, 2,800 ex uh, gold and experience respective lead over Epsilon right now. Again, formerly named Vengeance. They're doing a great job. But actually, we have an initiation here. Lennox caught out of out of position completely. Windfire Wheel is going to bring him up into the air. Four shots going to bring him down pretty low into the ultimate. And then Vanish is going to be enough to finish that up. Rastarian's Loki earning himself another kill and that's gonna give him some extra stacks on his heart seeker and put him closer to that critical mass of level seven now he's gonna go right in steal the damage off away from the tier tier goes with the fearless as a charge there's a cleave come down he dashes away immediately misses it and pops his ultimate for the cc immunity and this the pure safety and, and comfort of being able to get out of there alive we see actually cog be able to react to the heavy mo rotations from epsilon bach is kind of wandering back and forth between the mid and the left lane and cog is reacting to it they're just kind of sitting in there running interference and anytime someone tries to rotate they catch them alone before they're able to group up and it's just very very smart play so is going to finish off his boots of the magi now for that penetration actually skipped the starting item and went directly into boots he had tier, tier two boost to start sobek finishing off those uh actually the the boots here uh for midas the midas boots um and we actually will see tier one on bacchus so bacchus sitting at zero two and zero right now as well as the apollo apollo invested heavily in that tier two beads right off the bat he in fact has not even gone past his starting items and he, th with the tier two beads it's still not enough hercules and sobek are proving to be too much for him as you see three people grouping left side there's a driving strike the main doing damage tier actually dropping out half hp as sobek comes back into the fight do they have ultimates available hercules does sobek does not sobek ultimate come out pretty soon here looks like tier's gonna try and back away sobek looking for a charge prey rotation from naja gonna find tier in the jungle Armelius Sash does land. He's going to go up into his ultimate there pretty soon. And this might be enough damage to finish him off before he even lands. He's going to go to low on HP. And there's one hit. The Earthbreaker actually going to finish him off there as he lands down. And again, they have complete control of this little rotation spot in the jungle. Uh, and they've been doing a really good job of making sure that the rotations continue. Uh, continuously taking both mid camps. I mean, this actually might be a chance for Zeus to get on the board here with one. You see him rotating over towards the right side. But Loki had already cleared the left side. Level 8 now clearing pretty much everything in one shot except for those big minions one of which you don't even see those those giant gladiator minions the decoy is going to be enough he has to use a lot of mana talking about cobra kai here to be able to clear quickly and even so doesn't clear everything he's going to be forced back and forced to try to sit there and, and hug that but all the while we see lennox right now actually getting double pulled earthbreaker into the charge prey uh no driving strike there but still level five very very far behind as he sits um, about 2,800 gold, but unfortunately for Schultz, despite the fact that he's two levels ahead, is actually behind Lennox for bottom gold in the game at 2,840 right now. Desperately trying to get himself back into this game. Still, like you said, uh, Dry Bear, level one boots and death toll on top of those uh, those beads. But right now, we have an initiation mid lane. Assassinate's going to come out and is going to get the kill before the detonate comes out. Rastarian earning himself another kill and putting himself closer to, if not already, max out on that Heartseeker. You know he's very, very powerful. Again, we see uh, exemplified in physical form here exactly uh, what we've been talking about in the last few games, DM, is the fact that the ultimate from Zeus has such long an animation. You see Tyr getting jumped on here in the jungle. The stun's not going to land from the Chrono Sense. <laughs> one more one to send a message to have Tyr actually heading home here pretty soon. Uh, low HP, but again, that ultimate from Zeus takes a very long time. Even if properly animation canceled, still takes a very long time to get off. And in fact, Zeus couldn't even get the detonate off in time before the Loki just burned him down uh, in the middle lane. Zeus is actually go for a, a Bancroft's talent as Naja invades in the jungle here towards the movement speed buff. He actually gets it on the ground and he steals it away. It looks like he did. Naja stole the, the movement speed buff with Raw right there. So another big pickup for them. Here at the 8 minute mark, we're actually 6-0. Absalon has yet to put a kill on the board. And checking the grass, we see 4,600 uh, gold lead as well as 6,500 experience lead for Cog EU. The highest member on uh, Epsilon's 4,300 gold earned and that's just about tied with Kronos and Sobek overall. Cog is just dominating the early game. I don't think that Cinder recognizes the fact that he's level 6 right now. I mean, he kind of walked at that Kronos and Sprayer and backed up a little bit. I don't think he recognized that fact either. If he would have went in, I'm pretty sure he, at this point he could just 3-shot him. 
I mean, there's a lot of damage potential that can come out. And he can push it out very, very quickly. Actually landing the time stop onto Repikas just to ensure that he doesn't get to go back as soon as he wants. Uh, Sprayer earning himself a little bit of time with that one. No pun intended on this time. Uh, left side, it looks like we have under the water. The damage is coming through before the Chariot can bring him away to safety. He will be picked off and the horse will be driven into the ground along with Apollo's corpse as they dive towards the tower to do more damage. Still level 6. Lennox three levels behind Trix tank right now as they rotate over. Zindern almost getting caught again by the Armillary Sash. Has no chance to stop his jungle being taken. Right now, Cog is just absolutely putting down the massacre onto Epsilon. Taking a look at the graph, 5,600 ahead of gold, 9,000 ahead in experience. Yes, yeah, certainly. We're going to see uh, Naja rotate over here towards the zoo. So we see uh, Kronos going to find him. And does he land the stun? And he does not have it off cooldown. Armillary Sash again going to miss. Loki just jumps in and bursts down the Zeus right as he's trying to escape. Huge pick up there as the tier comes around. But again, level 7 tier, level 7 Bacchus, level 8 Apollo. And, you know, this is something that it, it may be missed by newer players. But experience is often much more valuable early on versus gold. And for the main reason you get more points in your abilities, you get more points in your ultimate, maybe one or two points in your ultimate, incredibly valuable early on, you get shorter cooldowns, longer durations, longer CC, and more base damage, where there's not a whole lot of items to scale with anyway, to the point where you just start to control the team fights early on, we're going to see an initiation here on the right side as Ra try to force back the Kronos, a possible initiation as Surrender Vote comes out! Epsilon is tired of it. They're only 6,000 gold behind right now. I don't think this was actually, you know, a lot no, of times it, teams it, will try to save their face and, and, and try to keep their, it's their more frustration. Than that. It's more than that. Two level 7s and a level 8. No one on, on COG was even in single digits anymore. That, that snowball was out of control, rolling downhill and rolling over everybody in its path. It's not always the gold, and that's something I try to tell people. It's the overall damage and just pressure they can put out. And you can see Lennox and Zen, I mean, level 7 tier, there's no damage coming out of that character. Level 8 Schultz with beads, there's no damage coming out of that character. Now, Cobra Kai and Repikas had a little bit of damage to put forth, but at the same time, Rastarian could just pick one of those two, mainly probably Cobra Kai, blow him up, and then just watch Cubo Fred and Game Hunter chase down Repikaz with no fear of ever dying to anyone else on the team. So, honestly, I think it's a good idea for them to just cut their losses there, go into Game 2 with a fresh mindset, and not frustrate themselves in a game that had maybe a 1% chance of victory. Yeah, a tough spot for them to boot. Uh, definitely uh, something that a lot of teams like to save themselves from game one if it's a tough one and not play out a long game and just go for game two. A little bit risky in certain situations. I think this game was not completely lost. They were definitely under duress. That was a hard game to win and it would have been hard fought if they decided to go out with it. I don't think it was completely lost, but they were in a tough spot. They had nothing going for them in the beginning and they decided they just don't want to play it out. They want to try to risk it. Uh, they don't want to try to you know bring themselves down or exhaust themselves. So they're just going to surrender it right away. Cog will take that first victory, uh, you know, completely uncontested. In fact, not a single kill went on the board for, uh, again, another string error here. This is not imaginary team. This is Epsilon Esports up against Cognitive e, uh, Gaming. You are probably going to remind you every single time this pops up. Uh, but again, uh, it, it just something that was a tough game for them. They got completely shut down in every possible way. Uh, Zindern rotating way too much to keep caught up in experience. Of course, Bach is getting caught out way too much. And I think the Sobek Hercules lane with the constant nausea rotations was way too much for them to deal with. And then they decided to leave a Zeus middle up against a Loki, which is probably the most painful things to uh, to face up against if you're playing Zeus. So a tough spot for them to be, but uh, you know, they're going to go to game two, they're going to learn a little bit from it, and you know, going into game two, you want to watch the picking stage to see exactly how they change their strategy.